Guarding the wall's western end stands the Shadow Tower and the Black Brothers who stand their vigil. Like all Night's Watch brothers, the Shadow Tower spearmen are clad in black leather and darkened steel, suited for warmth against the North's legendary cold. Spearmen make superior flank guards, adept at receiving enemy charges, whether that be from cavalry or infantry, and delivering punishing blows before their opponent closes range. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the recent Night's Watch release, uh, the Shadow Tower Spearmen. So the Shadow Tower Spearmen come with four unique sculpts, uh, no banner bear, of course, because we're Night's Watch, and uh, there aren't any fancy attachments in here. So for seven points, we end up getting a unit with speed five. They have a spear melee attack that hits on threes and has a seven, seven, four decay stat. Their defense save is 4+, plus. their morale is 5+. Plus. They also bring the order set for charge that triggers when this unit is successfully charged from the front or flank. If this unit is not engaged with another enemy, it performs one melee attack action on the attacker before they perform their melee attack. They also have the ability Unyielding that states this unit suffers minus one wound from failing panic tests for each one of its destroyed ranks. So my initial reaction to the Shadow Tower Spearmen are that they feel like they kind of have a strange role in Night's Watch. Uh, seven points is a pretty highly contested spot in a Night's Watch army, and for that, I don't know if the Shadow Tower Spearmen are really bringing enough. Like, they have decent stats. Like, they're hitting on threes. They've got the 7-7-4 seven, seven, attack stat. Um, they've got the 4-plus defense and 5-plus morale, which is pretty decent. Um, unyielding is cool, but when you have a 5-plus morale, you don't really need it a whole lot. I think it's a nice, uh, it's a nice like, insurance policy. It's a what-if, but I don't like paying for what-ifs on 7-point units. Set for charge is a really good order. Um, not having anything to modify that attack, though, or any kind of modifiers on your attack kind of makes it a little rough, like, uh, like the, uh, the... Lannister halberdiers, those ones have set for charge and sundering, so it's actually pretty tasty. Uh, I mean, the one thing that you could say about not having any melee abilities on these outside of set for charge is that your opponent would be likely to charge them then, or not be too worried about charging them, considering they don't have to worry about any negative modifiers, just that they'd be taking an extra attack. That being said, I don't like kind of discounting, or I don't like, uh, I don't like stating that units are just garbage and you should just never get them or do anything with them. I prefer to try and look for ways to make units workable because like I, I buy these things and I would like to use them and to just sit there and baselessly call them trash is really not, it's not the thing that I'm about. I'd like to try and challenge myself to make these things functional on the table. So that's what we're gonna try and do by looking at some of the things that might bring the Shadow Tower Spearmen up to a functional status. So let's turn our attention to commanders in terms of trying to bring this unit up a little bit. Uh, commander attachments don't cost you any points, so you don't feel like you're investing extra into getting these guys brought up, although you are kind of taking some advantages away from other units where these commanders might find a better home. Uh, so the first one I want to take a peek at is Donald Noy, the defender of Castle Black. Uh, the first order that he brings, well, the only order he brings along is Shield Wall. And this triggers when an enemy is performing a melee attack on this unit after rolling defense dice. If this unit is being attacked from the front or flank, it blocks plus one hit for each of its remaining ranks. He also brings the modification to their melee uh, called Improved Armaments. This states while you control the coin, this unit's melee attacks gain sundering and roll their highest attack die value. So Donald Noy can keep these guys around quite a bit if you're four plus armor save or your 4 plus defense save is not cut in the butter, or you take a big hit, uh, especially on the back of a vulnerable token or uh, sundering, you have the shield wall ability to try and help block some of those extra hits. Uh, and you also have improved armament, so you can take someone like the Shadow... Well, with the Shadow Tower Spearman not having any real awesome melee capabilities, you're kind of prioritizing wanting to get that coin zone but uh, you can give them Sundering, and they're going to be rolling seven dice all day long. If you have uh, Sword in the Darkness on them, then you're going to be rolling eight attack dice until they end up dying. And at three plus to hit, I think that's not a bad uh, place to be. 
so the first uh, commander card that Don Illinois brings along is Defense Formation. This triggers at the start of any turn. You attach this card to a friendly combat unit until the start of its next activation. While attached, this unit cannot perform attack or charge actions, but games plus one to defense dice rolls and attackers do not gain charge, flank, or rear bonuses against it. So this is not the type of card I would want to put on the Shadow Tower Spearmen because with the order uh, set for charge, they want to make sure that they're able to attack when they get the chance to. But what defense, but defensive formation does for the Shadow Tower Spearmen is kind of redirect your opponent's efforts. They kind of get put into a situation where if you're presenting the defensive formation unit and the Shadow Tower Spearmen, and you've got that coin zone claimed, they have to pick and choose which one they want to go after, either the defensive formation unit that's going to be hard to shift, or the Shadow Tower Spearmen where they're going to be punished for going into it, and then punished again for a, for an attack, and then possibly punished for an activation. Because like if they charge you right away, they haven't taken the sword zone or whatever, or the combat zone, then you get to take that smack, or you do set for charge, then smack them with the zone, and then smack them with their activation. So uh, it, th there's a lot of supposition here that you've got that coin zone to do a lot of this, but um, you know I think there's just some some value in trying to redirect or make put your opponent in a hard in, put a hard decision on your opponent's shoulders i guess with defensive formation the next one is refuse to yield this triggers after a friendly unit passes a panic test all enemies engaged with that unit become vulnerable and you attach this card to that unit until it fails a panic test while attached, each time this unit passes a panic test, all enemies engaged with that unit become vulnerable, and if this card's attached to Donald Noy's unit, they gain plus one to panic test rolls. So this is a pretty good card to have played on the Shadow Tower Spearmen. It means that if you don't have the coin zone, you're at least able to get those vulnerable tokens out as your opponent's kind of chipping away. Uh, at the unit itself and with Donald in there you're getting a four plus to the panic test roll and if you happen to fail any at least you've got the unyielding to try and try and uh, stop you from getting harmed too much you'll lose refuse to yield once you fail the panic test but I think this isn't a bad uh, card to have on them uh, just to help push some more damage through finally we have lash out this triggers after an enemy completes a melee attack if the defender was not destroyed, the attacker suffers two wounds for each of the defender's destroyed ranks. If the defender is Donald's, Donald Noy's unit, the attacker also becomes panicked. So the Shadow Tower Spearman again, 4 plus defense save, 5 plus morale. You're probably, I don't know how often you're just going to like get a rank shaved off right away, so you'll probably be likely to lose one in the next connection. But I think Lash Out at least can help push some extra damage again for uh, trying to get the thing that they're attacking out so like i can i'm just envisioning like your opponent charges in you use set for charge do a little bit of damage they smack you back maybe take out a rank you play lash out they take another two wounds and then you get to attack again uh with the normal activation so this is just a way to push some more combat through on them uh with donald noy okay next up i want to look at alistair thorn master at arms uh as a commander attachment he brings uh, vicious to the melee a a attack for the unit, and then also brings Prey on Fear, which states each time an enemy engaged with this unit fails a panic test, this unit restores two wounds. So just at base value, Alistair Thorn can give them a way to put a little bit of extra damage through with Vicious, and Prey on Fear is going to let it, going to make it so that if your opponent's failing morale tests while they're into this unit, um, you're going to be churning back wounds. So. I think when people play against Night's Watch, they don't really conceptualize or think that there's going to be a whole lot of panic shenanigans, more so that Night Night's Watch has more ways to defend against uh, uh, people messing with their morale. So uh, you might actually be able to get some damage through with just Vicious on these panic tests, and since you have set for charge and your normal activation for the attack, that's more opportunities for you to keep this unit filled up and then it'll be hard for your opponent to kind of shift them because they're, you know, swinging a bunch. They might be failing panic tests frequently, so you're able to keep the unit full. Um, just a harder unit to try and get rid of, I think, if Alistair Thorn's on them. 
I also have a feeling someone's going to say something about it, but one of my very good friends has a son whose name is Alistair. So whenever I see Alistair Thorne, I always put the T in there. It's just force a habit for me. So don't, uh, don't lynch me or anything like that. So, uh, for commander cards, the first one that Donald bring, or not Donald, Alistair brings is Pathetic Attempt. Uh, this triggers when a friendly unit passes a panic test from being attacked by a melee attack. You target the attacker. They suffer two hits for each remaining rank in this unit. If the defender was Alistair's unit, the, the, they also become weakened. So I think this is pretty decent if you're throwing it out on the Shadow Tower Spearmen. They've got a decent, a decent defense save, a good morale, so they should be able to pass it frequently. And again, I don't think your opponent's going to be trying to mess with your panic too much as a Night's Watch player, especially if you've got someone like Jayor in your pairing or something like that where you're able to kind of scare somebody off of uh, messing with your morale too much. But uh, once you once you um, pass that, you're likely to have two, maybe three ranks after that first attack, especially if you're able to shave a rank off with the uh, Shadow Tower Spearman's first set for charge attack. So they could be taking quite a, quite a hefty bunch of hits just for charging, charging the unit before they even before the Shadow Tower Spearmen ever get to activate. The next card Alistair brings is Seeing Their Flaws. This triggers after an enemy combat unit completes an action. That enemy becomes vulnerable and panicked. Then you attach this card to that enemy unit until the end of the round. While attached, while Alistair Thorne's unit is attacking that enemy, that enemy loses all abilities and cannot be targeted by friendly tactics cards. So... Seeing their flaws is nice for the Shadow Tower Spearmen. Panicked really synergizes well with Vicious. And then Vulnerable at least helps them get some extra damage through, considering they don't have any way to modify the melee attack ability, um, with unless they're looking at other outside influences. And if your opponent does have any kind of cool defensive tech, just being able to shut off those abilities so your Shadow Tower Spearmen can do what they want to without being disrupted at all is pretty nice, especially if you are looking at something like Disrupt or Counterattack or even like Lannister Supremacy or something. Um, there's a lot of really uh, beneficial things to shut off from units with this card, so I think that it helps them out quite a bit. Finally, we have the Price of Failure. Uh, this triggers when a friendly unit is performing a melee attack after rolling attack dice. All attack dice rolls hit for this attack, and then for each roll that would have missed, the attacker suffers one wound. Uh, again, this is if you really just need to get the hits through, Price of Failure works really well. Uh, hitting on threes, if you're already engaged, there's you know your 33% of your misses or 33% of your attacks are going to miss uh, in in magical probability land. But uh, with you having a 774 attack stat, you're not really too worried about losing some wounds, especially if you're getting some wounds back from Prey on Fear. So Price of Failure is pretty, I feel like it's an okay pull on the Shadow Tower Spearman when you're just trying to make sure that you can get those attacks to connect. So if we turn our heads to the uh, just base attachments, uh, the first one I want to take a look at is the Watch Captain, who brings the Order Relentless. It triggers at the start of a friendly turn. This unit performs a melee attack or maneuver action. Do not activate the unit this turn. Uh, they also bring Boldness and Courage. Uh, that states each time this unit attacks, it ha if it has full ranks, it rolls plus one attack die. Otherwise, it's treated as having plus one rank for attack dice. So... For three points, we are getting this unit up to seven or up to ten points, which is harsh. But uh, boldness and courage is going to give us an eight-seven-seven attack stat, so we're pretty dangerous up until the bitter end. And with relentless in conjunction with set for charge, we're getting three activations out of this unit or three attacks out of this unit when they if they get in a turn they get charged uh, before even considering any kind of like tactics board shenanigans or whatever we want to do so i don't know if i'm i would like windmill slam a watch captain onto this unit right away but it is interesting to see a unit get that many extra activations without influence from the tactics zone i think corn half hand grizzled ranger is another interesting attachment for two points we get the ability battle scars that states after this unit's attacked you place one order token on corn and this unit's melee attacks gain the following based on the number of tokens one token is vicious, two is sundering, and then three, you always roll your highest attack die value and re-roll any dice. You also get go down fighting, which states each time a rank in this unit's destroyed, one enemy they are engaged with suffers one wound. So if your opponent's going into this unit, uh, 
it, it just you're likely to stick around because you've got the decent you've got decent defensive stats to be able to keep around and go down fighting will push some extra damage the more you stack these tokens or order tokens the more dangerous they get and your opponent can't really ignore them but they don't want to charge them because they do have set for charge so if you're sitting here on two order tokens uh, which is not uncommon, right? Because Night's Watch is pretty notorious for their ability to heal a bunch. Uh, you're going to be, they're going to charge in and then they're going to get seven dice hitting on threes and it's going to be vicious and sundering. Like they're likely to lose something off of that and have to take a panic test that they might not pass as well. It's kind of the same reason why I was, uh, it's the same value that I put on Alistair is because, you know, people don't really think of, Night's Watch is having a bunch of ways to manipulate panic, so you might be going into a good a good uh, a good field for being able to manipulate the panic rolls a little bit. The final attachment to talk about is going to be the bargain pick. For one point, you can bring along the Watch Recruiter. That brings the Order Insight that uh, triggers when this unit's performing a melee attack before rolling the attack dice. The attack gains Vicious and rolls its highest attack die value. You also have Reinforcements that states each time this unit activates, it restores one wound, and if you control the Crown, you restore an additional wound. So the Shadow Tower Spearman with the Watch Recruiter can stay full, and Insight will give them that Vicious ability, and at their final rank, they're still throwing seven dice anyways. So um, again, just a cheap way to make them dangerous, uh, bringing them up to eight points, which is still a little hard to take, but it, it's something to help them get uh, further along. So overall, the Shadow Tower Spearmen are not something I'm going to be reaching for right away And when I'm in list building, if I'm doing something more on the competitive side. Um, in my casual games, for sure, I'll be taking these guys to try and, you know, see, just prove that I can do something with them. Uh, I, I think that when I look at the, again, I kind of stated earlier, they have some, you know, some of their abilities are a little confusing with... Uh, uh, unyielding being on a five plus morale unit, like uh, you're kind of like doubling down on something where you you have the good morale stat, so you might not actually ever get to use unyielding. Uh, I don't. I, I just. I feel like at the with the way they're designed right now, if you were to change unyielding for almost anything else in the game, I think they would still be a six point unit. And I think that's something that Night Night's Watch needs outside of like the Ranger trackers is they need a a. a a smaller point unit that can get some kind of, like I don't think having a tactics deck to turn your units into like you know Voltron death machines is uh the biggest excuse for keeping these guys at seven points I, I really do feel like they're not a six and a half point unit they're more like they're a six point unit maybe even like five and a half points but I wouldn't put them at five points at all so um I think if they were to stay at seven points, I could see exchanging unyielding for like a new ability in the game. I've always wanted to see a unit that has um, an ability that states they can't have their armor or their defense saves modified negatively. I think that would be something that could be cool with the Shadow Tower Spearman. It would make it seem a little bit more interesting when it when they you know when the fluff blurb kind of states like uh, they they do they 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 you know shrug off attacks from cavalry and infantry alike and i'm like eh, if these guys get charged by some tully cavaliers i don't care they, they they're still going to get sh shredded because of the lance rule so like i think um not having the ability to have their armor or their defense save modified would be really cool on them it would have been it would have given night's watch something a little bit unique and justified that seven point cost a little bit more give them a little bit more of a defensive unit i guess so that that's kind of my take on it i know that um again i don't like to get mopey on units because i do feel like you can unlock something on them to make them do what you want to in the game there are definitely more efficient picks for night's watch but I wouldn't say that the shower, the shower, the shadow tower spearmen are just like, you know, bench warmers for the most part. I think you can you can play them and, and do some cool stuff with them. They just take a little bit more investment to do, which is that's where things get hard is like how many points as a Night's Watch player do you want to invest in a unit that you really have to polish up in order to get it to perform?